Hello, travel biz owner. Welcome to my corner of the travel industry, the Strategic Travel Entrepreneur Podcast. If you're ready to have fun, be inspired, get clarity, and take action in your travel business, then you're in the right place. Let's jump in. Hello, everyone. Happy day that you are listening to this podcast. I am so glad and grateful that you are here. Um, I am a little bit under the weather-ish, so if you hear me kind of like slow, a little bit less energy, I have been battling a couple health issues recently that I thankfully went to a couple different doctors and specialists this week and got some really great plans of action, so not too concerned there, but, um, So a lot of what I have been dealing with, I got an official another diagnosis added to my list. So many of you know that um, I have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is an autoimmune disease. I'm not sure if I've really talked too much about my endometriosis diagnosis, but I was diagnosed with that, um, I would say like almost two years ago, like a year and a half ago. And the symptoms that have been really affecting me a lot are iron deficiency anemia, which I was diagnosed with that this week. Um, So, and lots of like habits changing. So um, I, I have been in that. And like, if you received the email on Friday today, or today, if you listened, uh, or if, if you're listening on Friday, I talk about, I may, it's looking like I'm going to have to go get an iron transfusion. And I bring this up only because uh, it makes me a little nervous. It makes me a little nervous to have it. And I've talked to a couple friends who have had it before. Sounds like it's no biggie. So um, I am welcoming all, like, I would love to hear any pointers if you yourself have had to have an iron infusion done before. Uh, Just to help fight away the jitters as I'm here waiting for insurance to give me the go-ahead to do the iron transfusion. So, um, And also, so many of you were so kind on social media when I had mentioned, like, just keep me in your good graces, thoughts, and prayers, and all that. And um, I I really, really felt them. It was, like, very calming because sometimes if you or someone that you know has dealt with a lot of chronic illness... It feels super lonely and super isolating. So getting your messages throughout social media really felt like a warm hug that was so, so needed. So I'm super pumped and happy that I got like some clarity this week. I am also super pumped. Uh, Got to have a marketing business school masterclass this week. And if I haven't said this enough, uh, just shout out to all my peeps in my community within Marketing Business School because they were like super gracious with me kind of dealing with some of these symptoms um, during our business, during our business, uh, during our masterclass this week. So huge shout out to everyone that's in Marketing Business School. Thank you so much for your grace per usual. And thank you also for supporting each other, especially... I had I had a bit of a coughing fit at some point. I was recording for my friends. And so they stepped in and were helping each other out with different questions and troubleshooting, which is the most amazing thing in marketing business school. I may be the host and I may be kind of like the guide and, and the leader of it, but I wholeheartedly believe in I am not the be all end all. I am not the only expert and everybody has valuable advice to give. So if you're looking for a community just like that, would love to have you join us in our Marketing Business School community. So uh, you can surely email me if you have any questions as well pertaining to that. But since I kind of have already mentioned chronic illness, let's start off with that being the number one thing. So when I was looking at 2024 and changes, both changes I wanted to make and also things that I wanted to lean into. Some of the biggest changes or like one of the biggest directions or things that I wanted to lay the foundation were because of my chronic illness. Now, I told you that back in December, 
I was starting to deal like with symptoms that I hadn't really dealt with before. And so it was really back then that I had started thinking like, I need to have a backup plan if I'm not able to physically work because I have to deal with these symptoms, I have to like do things and modalities, healing modalities, or I plain just need to give myself a rest. Like I one need to be able to still consistently make money on the back end because, you know, especially with health conditions, you need extra money on top of that for all the doctor's visits, all the meds, any supplements, and then any sort of treatments that you may be undergoing. Like there's so many things that I wish I could do that I can't do just because it's out of the budget. It's out of like the affordability of right now. So that's like big dreams. But planning for the future, I would have to say is the biggest, like that That was the number one thing because I have to plan for those times when I'm down. And I don't think like we as business owners like really think about that. Because when you're employed, you get sick time, you get vacation time. So like, no worries there, you're still going to get paid even if you're not on the job, not on the clock. That is not the same (laughs) when it is our own company. And kind of like even thinking long term, this also makes me think of one of the a business owner friend that I know, her husband, I believe it was a heart attack, had a heart attack, not last August, but the August before, and I think it was August, a time it is irrelevant. And because their business was not set up in a way um, where he could, so that's the other thing. And I don't really think we talk about this in the business is that you and there's certain different levels and again i'm not the expert on this this is probably a stephanie cannon question or like a finance or tax person but once you get to a certain level of income you should really consider paying yourself as an employee as a w-2 employee within your business because when you're able to do that and get to that point, or I, there's probably something different too. It's not owner's draws. I think it's, again, I don't know the terminology perfectly. The reason that I bring this up and he was in the hospital is that they have a family run business. Um, and he was obviously out of work for at least a week because he was in the hospital post this heart attack. Um, they had mentioned that they were, it was a miracle that he survived. And it's so, so amazing that he survived. But because he was out of work, not only being in the hospital, but also like working slowly, just recovering at home, physical therapy and all the like, he couldn't collect disability. Like many other people can collect disability or at least have, oh goodness, what's it called? There is something that you can get, and I used to have this when I was employed, that FMLA, it's part of the Family Medical Leave Act. When you have chronic illness or are dealing with somebody with chronic illness, it at least um, is kind of like a blanket almost that even if you're calling in sick, it won't really hurt against you if you have something called FMLA. And I know all employers are different. But there's just so many more things. There's uh, more access and more protections for people who are employed versus entrepreneurs because everything is on our own. So those are things that I want to consider too is that I want to be making an income level that if I ever had to claim disability because I was dealing with like a really big flare up with my autoimmune illness or whatever it might be, that I have that ability. So, and you also, you have to like, I guess, pay into that at some point too, like once you get to some level, but like those are the long-term, like I'm thinking about the what ifs and I wasn't really thinking about the what ifs. I was thinking about like, well, I need to make money now, don't we all? (laughs) But there's other like backup plans that you need to have in place. And so that is why really this whole planning for the future Blogging has really put been put at the forefront of my brain and not just like blogging for my travel business. It's really blogging for the purpose to monetize that blog on an ad network. 
And that means that, yes, there will be all those ads and things, but that means that I'm also able to give away the knowledge that I've gathered through all my years, and I'm able to put it to pen, so to speak, be of value to somebody that's looking for that information on the internet, and then get paid by the by the ad networks, by the people who are purchasing ads that are going onto my website. And so that has been on the on the viewpoint, because really what I need to do is just write articles based on travel experiences that I've had in the past. And so it sounds it sounds super easy. It's not. (laughs) There's a lot more strategy and in depthness that goes into the whole blogging. And so I have decided to also create a whole new website that's going to be for my consumer facing travel blog um, because I kind of want it to be a little bit separate from my travel agency site and also my travel agency site is hosted through someone that I cannot um, put ads on so that that was just not going to work and I wasn't willing to like rework the, the investment that I made on my website. So that's kind of an insight. I will be talking more about my blogging journey in a private podcast feed. So if you're kind of like intrigued about this blogging for your business and blogging to generate revenue passively with all of your travel knowledge that you have, um, shoot me a message so that I can add you to the wait list when that uh, podcast gets started. I already have like four episodes recorded, but it's it's not fully ready yet. I'm not fully ready to put it out into the world just yet. Um, but what I am utilizing to guide me there is Nina Clapperton's six months to 50K sessions. 50K sessions is kind of like the threshold that you need to start getting into like some really legitimate ad networks. And I have been in, I purchased Nina's course on this last month. It has been so invaluable. I believe currently it's either $247 or $297. And that course has like, is paying itself in dividends. <laughs> like I had not obviously gotten a return on investment just yet. I will be getting that in a couple of months, like following all her techniques and stuff. Um, But she is just so giving. She has a free Facebook group. Or is it a free? I'm not sure if it's a free Facebook group or if it's a Facebook group for people who bought into her programs. But either way, she provides so much value into that Facebook group. Um, So if I ever have any questions on things, I can always ask it in there. And then she is incredibly thorough in how she teaches and like go step by step on how to create a blog and like setting up your blog and building that website out. So um, highly recommend it. I'll go ahead and I'll put my affiliate link on the bottom below if that's something that you're interested in trying out for yourself is monetizing a blog with the amazing travel knowledge that you have in your brain. Because I know sometimes that's why we get in a rut as travel advisors is that there's so much of this knowledge, but a lot of, especially our friends and family, don't want to pay for that. They don't want us to book their trips or they don't want to pay our consulting fees for the knowledge that they that we have. They just want to be like, hey, can I pick your brain? And uh, I, it's 2024. It's time for us to work smarter, not harder. And so they can certainly pick your brain on your website that's being monetized and you're generating passive-ish income while you're sleeping. And so like that, that is really what's at the forefront is that I don't think I've really thought so much about the future as I have recently. And I'm, I, I'm thinking about future in terms of all the other big goals that I have. I bought a town home. I'm ready to move into a bigger home. What's that going to look like? Because it's much different uh, purchasing a new property of real estate as an entrepreneur than it is as a W-2 employee as well. So making sure that a whole other set of things has uh, ducks in a row and, um, and, and doing things to plan like for when I can't work and then also doing things to bring me to the income level that I want to be at, which I am very proudly getting there. Like all the, all the hard work is paying off. 
And I know that the blogging is kind of a lot of like, you got to do a lot of work now to get um, some dividends in the end. Um, the number two thing that really is at the forefront of me that I'm changing slash focusing on in 2024 is leaning in to what I love. And I did a lot of that in 2023. So really not too many regrets. Um, <laughs> what I'm hoping to do, so you know, I love doing the audio summit. So there's audio summits coming back. I just won't be doing as many of them because again, if I'm thinking about planning for the future and like planning for my future self, I, I did probably too much last year. <laughs> and um, stress, I would say, is one of my triggers for having a flare with my autoimmune condition. And so making sure that we don't do that. And also, when I think planning for, planning for the future, I also am thinking about my health. Like I recently told my partner, I'm like, I need to like get back on track. And like, I've already started eating better. The next part of that is doing some movement. The next part of that may be like doing some acupressure or red light therapy, sauna therapy, all sorts of things like that. I, uh, I just, I just want to be a better version of me overall. So that's planning for the future. And then Leaning in on what I love is really podcasting. So I have feel like I've been a little bit more open with you all and kind of like bearing a lot. I bared a lot at the beginning of this episode and really leaning into those collaborations and the connections that I've made within the industry. And how can I do that and provide value for other people's platforms. So when you're thinking about this, like as a travel advisor, what are some of the visibility opportunities that you really love doing? Do you really love being a vendor at events? Do you really love going to networking events? Do you really love making reels or TikToks? Um, I will say that something that has kind of like gone on the, I've kind of like pushed back, not pushed back, but like brought it back a little bit, the social media aspect, just because chronic illness had lots of things going the past couple of months and really wanting to focus my efforts on things that are easily compoundable. And I just haven't found there's a there's a time and place for social media. I just don't think that I'm in that headspace right now where I need to be focusing on that. I could see that in the future, once I have my blog and blogs all put together, then social media is something that I might be aiming to like look back on to help bring more traffic to the blogs because more traffic means more revenue. Um, but that's just not something at the forefront just yet, even though I do have so much fun like creating reels and all that when I am abroad. So I cannot wait to get back into it, but I'm also like, okay, let me, let me, I wanna, I want the time to be right for all that to, to be in. So really leaning in on not doing too much new stuff this year. I don't know if you've kind of picked up on that. Um, I kind of like, there'll be the Travel Tech Audio Summit that happens later this year. Then I will do another audio summit. Probably So Travel Tech Audio Summit will probably be in May. If you have any ideas of new up and coming or like favorite travel tech that you really love and would love to see featured on that summit, please shoot me a message. I already have a list of people that I'm scouting out and that I have contacts with, um, but it's so open to your recommendations as well. And then the next audio summit, which I will not say the name of it yet, but it's not one that you've already heard of. And that will be coming, I think, in August. And then, of course, many of you have heard of me through Prep for Wave Week. So that will be happening again in October. Then we have the big planning session and plan your year. And that happens in November. And if you're a member of Marketing Business School, you get that included. And then December, I just want to rest <laughs> or have a little bit of holiday fun too. Um, but because there's all these things that I do kind of like closer to the end of the year, uh, I don't, and the reason that I do a lot of this stuff, so kind of peeling back the curtain for you, because I want you 
also to use what I'm doing as a case study for your own travel business, a lot of what I'm doing is to grow my authority, also grow my email list, grow my contacts with the industry and increase my exposure because I can't be successful in the other things, which I would say an honorable mention is that I'm not doing anything without, like I'm not working without a fee, like I'm asking for what I need on certain things. And while yes, some of the things that I do are free it's always with the intention at the end not only to help people but also to generate some income because we're all business owners here like there's no shame in the game that we are all just trying to live an amazing life earning the revenue that we need to earn in our business and so those are some of the ways that i look for exposure uh grow my email list and then also provide really amazing value to you as travel pros at a really affordable price. Um, So yeah, leaning into the things that I love, which is communicating with you. Now, I will say something new that I have been thinking about doing are kind of like roundtable sessions, like Zoom roundtable sessions with listeners of the podcast. Um, so if that has been, if that sounds like appealing to you to get together with some of your fellow podcast listeners, where we just take an hour, I'm not sure if this would be monthly or quarterly, but it would be like if you're needing assistance with XYZ and somebody has a contact or if you need a referral for this or that, like we can all all get together, meet each other, network with each other, and then also help each other out with whatever might be going on in each other's businesses. So um, that if if I add something else, like that might be something that I add because I am all about relationships. And I think you cannot thrive in any business without making credible, incredible and meaningful relationships. Uh, and number three, And um, I don't know if anybody else has to deal with this, but one of my big focuses was to change my money mindset and how I am doing that. And I will link up this book. It'll be my affiliate link. It's called The Wealthy Spirit by Chelly Campbell. You can get it off of Amazon. I now I will say with all the chronic illness stuff that I've been dealing with this past week, these past couple of weeks, I'm a little bit behind on the book. But when I started the new year, I was reading a page a day. And so she has a little story. And sometimes it's pretty thought provoking about money. And this can be money. This is just like how we think or deal with money or or old money stories and things like that. And at the end of it, she always ends with some sort of affirmation. And I love some of her affirmations because she'll say, like, people love to give me money. And it just feels so good to say <laughs> to say it after reading something. And um, so when I say changing my money mindset, it's changing that money has to be hard. Why does it have to be hard? Does it have to be hard? It's also changing like just my perspective on what money is and how we can use money and what good money really does. And so really changing my all the like the negative talk, the negative stories that I have about money and changing them into good. It's kind of like putting good karma out into the universe for money to come and be attracted to me because I have a really great money mindset. And um, that's hard for me, obviously, to do on my own. So I have been reading that book and it's been super helpful because I will find myself saying like some of the affirmations just randomly, like another one of them is, I'm always winning. And when I win, I win big. (laughs) And it just see, just like, it makes me giddy. And I'm like, Yes, I am always winning. And when I win, I win big. It just, it's like an instant positivity mood boost. And like, once you change that, like there's a lot of different things within your spirit. And I like why, I like how she calls it the wealthy spirit that can change within also. So those are the three kind of like big things for 20, as I was thinking about 2024, is that I need to do things differently and strategically to plan for the future. I can't just do things anymore 
in the moment, on the fly, because it sounds like a good idea, I also need to be thinking, okay, is this going to help me get where I'm going? Um, also hugely leaning into the things that I love, um, not only because I love doing them because I'm going to love getting them done and getting the tasks done if it is something that I'm super passionate about, which is like podcasting, meeting you all, putting events together like that is totally my jam. And then changing my money mindset to help me accomplish some of these goals. So let me know, like, what are some of the things in 2024 that you kind of like were changing or looking for? I would say these are definitely the top three top of mind things uh, that I had for myself personally, but also professionally in my business. So um, I want to hear from you. So please feel free to reach out to me or join me in the Strategic Travel Entrepreneur Facebook group. And until next week, I'll see ya. Thanks for joining me on the podcast today. Remember to check out the show notes for all relevant links and resources from today's show. See you next time.